Good morning and welcome. It's uh, lovely to see so many people out this morning. And uh, to all those who are joining us online this morning, uh, uh, welcome to you. Or if you're joining us at a later time today or this week, it's welcome. Um, before we enter into this time of worship, let's just take a moment for prayer. God, you come and walk beside us. You accompany us into the unknown and challenge us to see the world with new eyes. Remind us of your vision again and again. Amen. Announcement time. I think uh, there's a few announcements. So. Uh, we're making turkey pies again on Wednesday, so we'll open the doors from 11.30 to 12.30 so you can come and purchase your freshly made turkey pies, and you get five for $20, so we hope to see you this Wednesday. Um, the other thing is we have the Woman Chant Chorus and Drummers. They will be performing for us on Monday, May the 15th at 7.30 here in the church, this fundraiser, the proceeds will go to help the refugee fund. Um, the tickets are $10 per person, and they are available only at the door. So that's 7.30 on May the 15th. So hopefully you can come and support that worthy cause. Thanks. Good morning. Um, last week, Diana Ross had a fall, and she fractured her hip. So she went into surgery Thursday in Niagara Falls last week. And she's still in Niagara Falls, but with her daughter. So um, we were hoping to get her back to Dunville tomorrow, but there's no news right now. But that's just an update for Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Silken. Um, also, Silken and I have been plan uh, started talking and planning. There's going to be another hymn sing-along in May. We, it's been a few months since before Christmas, but I know people certainly appreciated and enjoyed those hymn sing-alongs, and so I thought before I head off on sabbatical, let's do another one. So, May the 10th, it's a Wednesday, 7 o'clock in here, and uh, if you have suggestions, requests for hymns you'd like to sing, let us know. Uh, contact us by email or leave a message in the office with Janine by next Friday, by this coming Friday, the 28th. Uh, so it gives Silken a little bit of time to make sure she, she knows all the hymns that people want. And again, another, as in other cases, we'll figure it out ourselves to make up the time if uh, we don't have enough uh, suggestions. But I uh, hope that uh, you can make it out to spend some time singing in community on uh, May the 10th. Good morning. Um, I have heard Janine's uh, name being spoken about uh, a couple of times today, and I really don't think we could run without Janine. So happy Secretary's Day on Wednesday to our beloved Janine. Thanks. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, Abby's birthday was on April the 13th. So it was a couple. I, I've lost. What day is it today? <laughs> Yeah, the 23rd, yeah. So, <laughs> yes, Shakespeare's birthday today. No, um, if, no, I didn't. So, um, yes, Abby's birthday was a couple of weeks ago, but I haven't been here for a couple of weeks, I guess, have I? Um, all right. Um, let us then begin our time. Oh, something crash? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let us uh, begin our time of worship as we sing hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks, and we light our candles.
you if you're able to, please, to, to remain standing for our call to worship. Um, okay, so there are some hand gestures if you feel up to it and something you're willing, willing to go along with. Otherwise, I'll just do them all on my own. Uh, so uh, I'll let you take a look at what these are. And friends of God, we come into the presence of God to be stilled in heart. With believing our hands, we reach out to receive. With our open to our open, we will learn how to live in the free and spirited ways of Christ. This is what happens when we don't practice. <laughs> Let us pray. God of broad earth and deep sky, of wholesome bread and delicious wine, you delight us with your nearness. You astonish us through the ordinary ways. You make yourself known. May delight enrich our worship so that gratitude carries, on, carries us onto roads of grace, goodness, and compassion. Amen. Now let us join in our opening hymn, you have call, I Have Called You By Your Name. Amen. Please be seated. As we continue our time of prayer, we take time as a community to bring before God those ways that uh, we struggle. We sometimes run into speed bumps, shall we say, or barriers that 
seem to be getting in the way of our relationship with God and with God's creation. And so we offer a prayer of confession, but at the same time recognizing that God's love, God's grace and mercy is always open to us. Fellow travelers alive to... Nope, that's wrong. I got to the right place. When all seems lost and circumstances leave us feeling empty and afraid, may God of unwavering, God of unwavering hope When trust seems impossible and our eyes remain tightly closed to the constant breaking in of spirit, God of unwavering faith, when our spirits feel dry and listless, and where hurt or resentment creates barriers to human care and friendship, God of unwavering love. Fellow travelers, alive to God's constant word of faith, hope, and love, may we journey into life in new ways. May we take God's gift of presence, peace, and forgiveness to heart, receive it gladly, live it with passion and boldness, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And uh, what I've got written down here is that our ministry of music this morning is provided by Gail Squires. So do you have a CD for that? I... Scripture. Oh, there's a book here. <laughs> I had this one here if you wanted it, but if you want to. <laughs> oh, is that a bigger print again? Maybe. This is a, a good day. <laughs> It's not much bigger. Well, 24, 13. Yeah. Wow. So.
since I've got it here already, I'll find the right place for you. There it is. The walk to Emmaus. 13.2. Sorry about this. Scripture is Luke 24, 13 to 35. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you are walking along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and, their, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he, was, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Thank you, Sandy. I'm going to stand here for a little bit, uh, Gwen, and then I'll be moving back there. But I want, just wanted to start here. I wanted, you'll notice I lit a third candle this morning. Um, we are still in the season of Easter. And so part of that, of course, is the celebra- continued celebration of the risen Christ. And so at least for the next couple of weeks, continue to light a cancel, candle acknowledging that Christ is risen indeed. The other thing I just wanted to do, share this morning is, uh, I, I do this occasionally. I think it's, for me, it's a way of uh, explaining why I wear what I wear when I, when I lead worship. Um, because for me, it, everything I put on is a reminder that I do not walk this path alone. And that's for me, very much a part of what this scripture reading this morning is about, that we do not walk alone. And when we turn to the people who are with us, we should be able to see the face of Christ in them. So, um, just a number of different things I'm wearing. Sorry, Gwen, I'm just going to make things really complicated for you now. I realize that. But sometimes it's nice to get out and walk. (laughs) <laughs> um, so there's the alb. That's what this, these robes are officially called. It's an alb. Um, 
This was a gift to me from Ellie and our children back when I was still in seminary. So obviously, so when I put that on, I'm certainly remembering my family. The, the cross I wear. This was, this is from Olive Wood, and it was a gift to me from my mother that she purchased while she was on a trip to the Holy Land in Jerusalem. Um, this stole, all my stoles are a gift from someone, which uh, is part of the reason that uh, I'm very fond of all the stoles I have. And, and I have quite a few now, I've realized. So it becomes a sort of a fun project in, on a Sunday morning, deciding which one I'm going to wear that day. So this was a gift from a fellow minister. So very much appreciated. Um, working my way down. Okay, this rope that keeps everything in place. Um, this is a gift from the Catholic priest who was uh, serving in Sulacote at the same time as me. Uh, before that, I just had a piece of, a strip of cloth that came from the alb that I, I tied around my waist. And it would be nice to have something a little more formal, I guess. And was, he had a, this fit me, <laughs> as opposed to some of the other things that were much nicer. They didn't fit me. But anyway, so this rope belt is a gift from uh, you know, Father Mike, a lovely man. So, and then the medicine bag, a little medicine, this that I also have. This was gifted to me by, I'm going to make sure I get this one right. I, yeah, this was gifted to me by fellow students at the Jesse Soto Center. That is a, I think they've changed the name of it now, but it was a, it was a center for indigenous teaching for uh, indigenous students for, for, for ministry in Manitoba, which I was required to attend for a couple of weeks as part of my training for ministry. And so one of the things we received was this medicine bag, leather medicine bag. So again, it's a gift, but also a reminder of the many people that have, been, have accompanied me and supported me and guided me and encouraged me along, the, along this path. Oh, what's in the bag? Oh, I've, got, uh, I've got some tobacco that I carry with me. It's, pardon? Just tobacco is all I have right now. No, I keep it simple. But it's nice to have some tobacco on hand sometimes with this because if I find myself encountering a place where there is uh, a native elder who is uh, providing wisdom or being part of the service um, in various different ways, whether it's smudging, uh, playing, uh, you know, singing a song on the drums, um, offering prayers of their own, it's... Uh, it's good to provide a gift of tobacco. It's a sacred element within indigenous teaching. And then finally, um, my moccasins. I'll take them off so I can hold them up for the camera and for everyone else to see. And so th another gift. They're all gifts. The, this, these are a gift from my child Elizabeth that uh, were... Um, purchased from, I always get this wrong, Ellie. I can't remember her name, but she's the grandmother of... A grandmother of a friend of uh, Abby and Elizabeth's from school. Um, Medici. Yeah, it's from the Medici to the Eagle Head. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it's beadwork of, of a, a, a head of a bald eagle. So, again, it's this is all, for me, part of, so I don't fall over in front of everybody. <laughs> it's, as I walk my path of ministry, I walk my path of faith, I do not walk it alone. 
there are so many people that have been part of that journey. And I'm sure there'll be many more as I go along, but everything I put on as I, be, as I prepare to lead worship is a reminder that I do not do this alone. There are so many people that have been part of that journey and so many people that will continue to be part of that journey in one way or another as I go. So I offer that. Now I have something to read. <laughs> I, I thank you for your attention. Now reflecting a little bit more on this passage from Luke, and I thank Sandy for reading that. And I thank Gail for her contribution of music this morning. So imagine you are taking a long walk home with a friend. It's warm, and you're reflecting on recent events in your life. You're grieving the recent death of a friend, perhaps, so you aren't paying a great deal of attention to your surroundings as you make this journey. But before you know it, a stranger is walking next to you and your companion. You strike up a conversation, and as you near your home, you suddenly decide to invite this stranger to come and eat with you and spend the night. Does this sound like something you'd do? Or upon first meeting this stranger, would you slow down and let him walk in front of you? Or speed up? Or perhaps cross to the other side of the street? Anything to avoid interacting with this newcomer? You're not expected to answer that out loud. Perhaps you provide a little banter, but what are the chances you actually invite this person into your home to share your meal? Everything in our lives tells us don't talk with strangers. We are told that from the moment we are enabled to leave our homes as a child independently. Be wary of strangers. Don't trust them. I don't want to argue about placing absolute trust in people we don't know. As a middle-aged, middle-class white man, my experience in the world is very different from women, people of color, young people. I know that. But I also think there is a difference between being cautious and viewing every stranger we meet as a threat. In the story we hear this morning, these two followers of Jesus encounter a stranger, and they enter into a conversation and invite this man into their home and share a meal. In doing so, they come to realize they are talking with, breaking bread with, Jesus. And they recognize the face of Jesus in this stranger. We encounter the risen Christ in the people we meet, the people we share a meal with, the people we get to know, and the people we treat with love and compassion. In recent days, the followers of Jesus in this story saw their movement betrayed. They saw their leader arrested, interrogated, tortured, and executed in a violent and public manner. Many of Jesus' inner circle are in hiding, afraid they are next. The concern they will follow Jesus into custody and possible death is very real. These disciples on the road to Emmaus have every reason to be suspicious and perhaps paranoid. And yet, they welcome this stranger into conversation and ultimately into their home. These decisions and actions, well, they run counter to so much we are taught, either at home or by a culture grounded in suspicion, in fear, and in paranoia. So much of our culture, our news, our entertainment teaches us the stranger is malicious, 
seeking to harm us and steal from us. This way of seeing the world is poisoning us. It's dividing us and it's increasingly killing us. Reading the news this past week while preparing for this sermon, the significance or the critical importance of the message at the root of today's scripture was made all the more clear to me. An 84-year-old man, apparently fearing a home invasion, shoots a 16-year-old boy who knocked on the wrong door. A man who, who knows what he was thinking, steps out of his home to shoot at a car with young people who turned into the wrong driveway. In doing so, he kills a young woman. And another teenager accidentally opens the door to the wrong car on her way home from cheerleading practice, and she and her friends are shot. Two are wounded. That's just in the past week. Absolutely, these instance, incidences point to the danger of easy access to guns. But there's something else we need to confront going on here, I believe. I see a fear of the stranger, a refusal to interact with your neighbor, and a willingness to immediately resort to lethal violence when confronted by those you don't recognize. I think it's also important to note that the young man who was shot while looking to gather his little brothers went to three different homes in that neighborhood seeking help after he was shot before someone finally responded. And then he was told to lie down with his arms held out in front of him before he received any kind of help. Even as he was bleeding from a gunshot wound, he was still, still met by fear and distrust. Jesus tells us our neighbor is not just the people we know and like. Our neighbor is also that person who tries our patience, or the person we were taught to hate, the person we never wanted to know, God calls on us to love them, to welcome them, and to feed them. And in today's scripture reading, we are further told that when we take time to meet them, to feed them, and to listen to them, we will see the face of Jesus, who was tortured and killed by those who despised him and feared him. And yet he rose from the dead. So much of our culture encourages us, teaches us that we cannot trust those who do not look like us, do not walk, talk like us, and do not think like us. In fact, we are told, maybe not in blunt words, but in images and a constant drumbeat of horror stories and cautionary tales that we should fear those who seem unfamiliar. We are urged to not see them as human beings, but as a potential enemy poised to harm you or steal from you. Fear or distrust what is different. Fight back against the specter of change, and don't dare let compassion and the love of your neighbor interfere with living as sheltered and comfortable a life as you desire. follow Jesus is to look for the face of the risen Christ and the people you meet. To follow Jesus is to hope for the new heaven and the new earth that Jesus envisions for us and that God promises those weeping in pain at the violence and oppression that are so much a feature of this current world. To follow Jesus is to know and celebrate the fact that new life, new possibilities, and change are very much a part of God's wondrous creation. Jesus encourages us to live life with courage and daring, 
to dare to love, to live with compassion and not let fear, fear of the unknown or fear of a new world, rule our lives. And part of our call as the children of God is to recognize that everyone we meet, everyone we meet is a beloved child of God who's on this same journey with us. And, we, and when we take time to look them in the eye, we know that we have just met the risen Christ. And can we then say, Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Silken. We come before God in gratitude. We take time to reflect on how much we have received, how generous our God is. And we reflect on what we have that we can return to support the work that continues to be put before us by God. So we take time to hold up what we offer, asking a blessing upon it. And so at this time, may we join together, standing if able and singing praise God from whom all blessings flow as we receive our offering. Mm -hmm. giver of life. In the same way bread is broken and shared for the benefit of all, so might our offerings of money, time, and giftedness be a breaking open of abundant love 
to the world. Amen. Where are prayers of the people this morning? There is a, there's a response, so you get to join me in this. We as a community, again, join our prayers together, offering our prayers for those we know in need of God's healing love and God's presence, offering our gratitude and our concern as individuals and as a community at large. And so we pray. Bread for all, bread in all, we pray, O oh God. When we are orphaned, hungry and oppressed. Faith for all, faith in all, we pray, O oh God. To recognize faith in other ways, our texts, and in other worshiping communities. Grace for all, grace in all, we pray, O oh God. When we are strange, Wisdom for all. Wisdom in all, we pray, O oh God. When we are disabled, neglected, and impoverished. Healing God, we take time to bring before you the names of those we know who are ill, those who are in pain. those who are awaiting diagnoses, anxiously awaiting treatment, those recovering from surgeries. Pray for those who grieve, those who are alone, those who are lonely, those who are anxious over what the future may hold. But today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, and the day after that might bring. May your compassion, your wisdom, your strength be with them all, offering healing and guidance and inspiration. Spirit for all, spirit in all, we pray, O oh God. Mother Earth, our children, and a shared common future. Amen. Now let us join in our closing hymn. I hear I heard the voice of Jesus say, it's number six hundred and twenty six in Voices United.
Thank you for your attention and patience with me this morning, this service. And as you go forth with the rest of your day and the rest of your week, I offer you this blessing. May you go into the world with your hearts burning. May you find the slow wonder of God greet your heart in new and surprising ways. May your eyes be open enough to love deeply from a mutual heart, for this is how God loves you. Go into the world with love and joy, for God's peace always goes with us. Amen. out with joy and be led forth with peace the mountains and the hills with Yes. 